anyone who tries to claim there isn't an agenda within the school system for grooming and sexualizing children is blatantly lying. Look at that right there. Staff in Ohio's Hilliard City School District were given these badges from the National Education Association, a major teacher's union. The badge has a barcode that leads you to guides on extreme sexual content. One of them, Queering Sex Ed. Let's bring in a mother from Fairfax, Virginia, and VP for Strategy and Investigations for Parents Defending Education, Azra Namani. She's back. And also back with us, Keisha King, the Keisha King Show podcast, podcaster from Florida. Keisha, thank you. Thank you guys both. Azra, before we get to some of the books that you have, I, I want our control room to play this video that I saw, and, and we talked about it yesterday, but it's worth noting that this is Tennessee. Look at this drag queen. There's a young child. That kid can't be more than three or four years old. And do we really want our children to be watching as this person stri uh, just bends and, and spreads? Uh, help us out here, Ezra. This is gross. Oh, yeah. And this one, I think probably for FCC regulations, you weren't able to show the a video of the child feeling up the genital area of one of the other dancers. I mean, it, I watched it a dozen times because I just couldn't fathom that this was happening in the United States of America to our beautiful young children. Um, you know, what we have happening right now is exactly what you said, you know, an indoctrination that is happening of children into ideas that are hypersexualizing them. And the appropriate word is grooming because it means that adults are having conversations and inappropriate conversation, conversations with children. So last time yeah. I showed you this book, Hips on the Drag Queen Go Swish, Swish, Swish. Now we have If You're a Drag Queen and You Know It. And what are the images? They are now showing, you know, the kind of um, drag queen shows children are going to with the stiletto heels, right? And the hypersexualization of the female body also. Yeah, and that... it's, it's, it's just unreal in, in some of the other... By the way, we love your cat was highlighting some of the books behind you. <laughs> Gotta love that, you know, live TV, folks. Um, exactly. uh, allow me to, to jump over to Keisha. Keisha, um, pull up this full screen, folks, uh, in the control room. Taxpayer-funded organization called Zero to Three is actually promoting trans identity to young, young babies, zero to three young people. And get this, they got $230 million of taxpayer money over the last few years. What are we doing? It's a good question, Eric. What are we doing? You know, I was when I was first coming into this fight and, and looking at critical race theory, I was finding stuff back as far as 2011 here in Duval County. So I knew then that this stuff went further back than we could ever imagine. This is why I stress to parents, these are not one-off situations. These are not just one school somewhere in some obscure place around in America. This is happening all across the country. We cannot pretend and just kind of want to ignore it because these things are so egregious and just think that maybe it's just not happening in our schools. It is happening all over America and it is coming from the top. It is coming from the federal government. And I urge parents, this is why I'm pushing so hard for school choice, because we have to get our children out of these indoctrination camps as soon as we can. And I'm working with FreedomWorks and uh, ParentsKnowBest.com to help push this, this, this movement, really, yeah. to get children into better learning environments, because this is unsustainable, Eric. Right. We cannot let our kids be raised this way. We have to do something immediately. Yeah. I, I got I, only about 30 seconds or so. Azra, you're in Virginia. A lot of people understand that most of the lawmakers or a lot of the lawmakers that are making these rules and sending this money to these, these groups uh, live in, in the area. You did it. You guys did it in Fairfax, Virginia, and Loudoun County, Virginia. Is there is there hope? Let me give you oh, 20 seconds each, if I may. Absolutely. There's hope. You know, I'm now with an organization called Independent Women's Network, and what we did is we galvanized the parents of Virginia to speak to the governor and to tell him that we want parents' rights on issues related to gender pronouns, for example, with children. You know, the previous administration said that schools could keep it a secret. 
from parents. And that's what has to end this entire secrecy and the separation of children from their parents. And so completely agree with Keisha that we need parent rights because ultimately parents are the best defenders. Finally, of final thought, uh, Keisha, about 20 seconds or so in Florida. Is there hope? There is absolute hope. Get your kids into a better learning environment. You have a short window of time to get your kids educated, and that's what we have to do. We have to pull them out of these indoctrination camps. While we change school boards, we have to also be getting our kids into better learning environments. Awesome, awesome. You guys are amazing. I love having both of you on. We'll bring you back again always. Keisha King, Azra and Mai, thank you for joining us. Appreciate your time. Thank, thank you. you. Have a great day, everyone.